this is your first video on networks. Now this is um, to do with graph theory. So first of all, this, this video is gonna concentrate on teaching you the basics of graph theory before we can go on and use it in any useful kind of way. So this particular branch of mathematics is not about these kinds of graphs. So kind of get that out of your head when we're talking about graph theory with networks, it's something else. It's usually something that's maybe designed around a map. Now the, the first beginnings of graph theory as a branch of mathematics um, started in a place called Königsberg in 1736. Now there was this um, setup in the city where they had these four pieces of land that were joined by seven bridges. Now we can create what's called a graph of um, this situation so we can display that information a bit more simply. So for each of those land masses we give it a, a dot and I've just labelled them A, B, C, D so I can talk about them easily. Um, and for each bridge we're going to join up the dots where there's a bridge connecting those two bits of land. So here between A and B we've got those two bridges, between B and C we've got those two. C and D has just got the one bridge between B and D there's one and between A and D there's one. So now we have this um, diagram set up to show us the connections there. Now the people of Königsberg had this problem um, where it was a bit of a tourist attraction to try and walk each bridge once and not repeat any bridges. So they they had this problem where they were trying to work out if this was possible, if they could get between all four landmasses crossing each of the bridges just once only. It's kind of like the problems that you did in primary school where you had to try and draw something without taking a pencil off the paper. Okay, so if we take this diagram, so this is just copied but with the map removed, I'm going to simplify it a little. We don't have to have it in its geographical locations exactly. We can make the diagram a little better. So those four um, blobs that we had representing the land masses, I'm just redrawing them over to the side here. Each of the connecting edges, we're just doing it a little bit tidier so it's easy to see what's going on and we can get rid of that diagram now. So the problem was, can you draw this without lifting your pencil? You might want to take a pause now and see if it's possible on the paper. So once you've given it a go, it's kind of like doing this house diagram that I'm sure you've all done where you try and draw it without taking your pencil off the paper. But you'll see that this one from Königsberg is actually impossible. But what they were interested in finding out was why and how could you know that it was impossible. Um, that brings us to a guy called Euler. So that's his name. You say it Euler, not Euler. Um, and he was a mathematician nearby in um, Petersburg uh, who was given this problem. And he actually thought it was a little bit trivial, a bit kind of beneath him. But it's got him thinking about graph theory and the things that you could map out like this and the stuff that you could come up with. Okay, so what we need is some names for things. So these orange blobs, the bits of the, the graph that you go between, they're called the nodes. So A is a node, so is B, so is C, and so is D. The connecting lines, they're called edges. Okay, so you've got edges on these graphs, um, just like in Königsberg and our, our house drawing problem, anything that joins up two nodes is called an edge. Okay. Sometimes you get weighted edges, which gives us a little bit more information on the graph. So for example, you might want to write down the distances between um, the, the, the two places, the two nodes, um, or the walking times or something. Say for example, this bridges problem, maybe it's the, the length of time in minutes that it takes to walk along that particular route. And then it gives you a little bit more information. Okay, so if we just simplify this down, the types of things that we can do now with that diagram is, uh, well, there's three main things you're going to, to learn. What, the first one will be the shortest path. So you might want to find the shortest path between um, particular nodes or going through any kind of route that, that starts at one place and finishes at another, or it might have to include some particular places on the way. There are ways to discover what, what the shortest path is between those things. And your network diagrams will be a little more complicated than this bridges one. 
The next thing you'll know is um, traversability. Now that's the problem that we started off with. Is it possible to go along all of the edges without repeating any edges? That's what traversability is. If a graph is traversable, it means you can draw it without lifting your pencil off the paper. You might start and finish at a different place or the same place, but you can actually draw it um, without having to repeat or go over any edge more than once. And then the last thing that we'll look at is the minimum spanning tree. And that means being able to draw in enough edges so that you are able to connect all of the nodes in the, the smallest possible way. Um, we will come to study each of those properly in the next videos, but this is the basis of, of what we're starting with. Um, if you can understand how graphs are set up, then you're already well on your way to being able to do the rest of it.